at Baltimore for week eight. W six and one. And we got the Falcons this week. We won 41 to 31 in a shootout. Darnold still not throwing any picks, and we get three picks off of Joe Flacco. Somehow, or that's tackle for loss. I thought we said Aaron Lynch had two interceptions. Uh, but it's Coakley, and Cash actually gets in there, even though he's not a starter. So our yearly awards are out. Sam Darnold is fifth in MVP voting. We are number one in Coach of the Year, which would help our legacy pursuit, considering we are going for that number one legacy achievement here. Bowman going after Defensive Player of the Year. So by the way, I've been really trying to get the block a punt achievement. Does anyone have any tips for how to do that? Because if I do get this legacy achievement, that's the only achievement I'm gonna need if I'm gonna get full completion for Madden 17 here before 18 comes out. So let me know if you guys have that achievement and how you got it. I actually did manage to block a punt once, but I guess I was simming, so I didn't get the achievement. All right, at Atlanta for week nine. I'll be pretty surprised if we get this win. And we get it, we're seven and one. What a difference a year makes, wow. 31 to 24, that's a good hard fought game. Darnold still no interception since week one. All right, on the road at Minnesota, it's gonna be another tough win. Eight and one, put up the W. This is crazy, this is going way better than I expected. I set it at 10 wins, because I thought we had a good chance to make the playoffs. I didn't think we had a chance of being the best team in the league, but Sam Darnold is really carrying us right now. He throws five touchdowns to no interceptions. He's going off. We won like 35 to seven. <laughs> the headlines read David versus Goliath with us being the Goliath now. Boy, how the tides have changed. Divisional game, Cardinals coming to town. Nine and one, keep it rolling. 30 to 27. Darnold does finally throw a couple picks. That's only four on the year now. So we got Zach Short up to a 92 overall now. Caesar Gales is going to be superstar development now. So the receiving core looking up. Uh, after the first few years, we really did not have anyone. Those guys were rookies last year. So the eight and two Cleveland Browns coming to town. My roster in this franchise are predicting the Browns revival to be a real deal, guys. It's a big matchup, a big Super Bowl potential matchup between the Browns and the 49ers right here. And it's an L. So we pick up our first L since the Seahawks. 33 to 31 though, we handled the, a very good team pretty well. Nothing too exciting statistically. We got a three game road trip here at Cardinals, at Saints, at Seahawks. So a telling tale here, we're not at 10 wins yet. Uh, so hopefully this doesn't snowball on us and we can at least get to that 10 win mark. I think we are in pretty good control of the division at this point though. So we do have a safe lead. The closest team behind us is five and six. So we're only, you know, a game away from clinching this division. Let's see if we can just wrap it up right here. We're at the Cardinals who we, uh, we took care of the first time. And there it is, 10 and two. That should be enough to get us in the playoffs. And it meets our season goals. We do have our first injury of the year. Let's see if it's bad. Not that bad. Three weeks for our starting center. We should have some one to play there. We do have a 71 overall replacement, not the end of the world. So we won 43 to 25. The offense really showing up. Darnold goes three to no interceptions. Three touchdowns to no interceptions. Bowman gets a pick and a bunch of tackles to put up his case for Defensive Player of the Year. So now Sam Darnold is on top of the MVP race. He needs to finish strong to get that. And boy, he's going to be like a 99 after he wins MVP. He's already a 91. We got Coach of the Year so far, but the Browns, Hugh Jackson, right behind us there. Bowman does still have the player of the year in his grasps. Dorio Green Beckham with Jared Goff in LA is the rookie of the, uh, excuse me, the receiver of the year right now. But Darnold right now looking at offensive player, MVP, and best quarterback. That would be a ton of XP. 
I think we probably could get him pretty close to 99. And I think we have to pay him next year too. So that's going to hurt uh, the books for sure. So we got to go to the Saints. I know they have a superstar quarterback that they drafted last year. And I also kind of want to say we have their first round pick this year. I'm not entirely sure about that. You guys probably remember better than I do on that. Uh, so here we go, week 14 at the Saints. Let's get this W. And there it is, 11 and two. We do pick up a couple injuries, don't be bad. We lose James Conner and our left guard for six weeks. Now that is a little worse. We are already playing a backup lineman. Not easy to lose multiple players at similar positions like that. Let's see what our starting left guard is going to be really until, what will that be, like the conference championship? Hopefully that doesn't hurt our playoff chances too bad. Now we do have a 75 overall rookie, so not a terrible drop off there, but we cannot have any more injuries on this offensive line. It also doesn't help that offensive line is already one of our weak weakest positions uh, probably is our weakest position and so we won pretty big against the saints we pick up three interceptions darnold does throw one so the offense was pretty lackluster it looks like it was mostly the defense the veterans getting involved here getting a few picks so i still don't totally believe it but we're 11 and 2 at week 15 Picking up some injuries, but we got to stay healthy here to wrap up the season. We're at Seattle. They're seven and six. They're putting together some wins here, trying to fight to make the playoffs. It'd be nice to knock off the division rival. And we lose again. So Seattle's got our number this year. And they kind of kick our ass 42 to 24. Shutting us down. Darnold only throws for 120 yards. Oh man, we do not want to meet those Seahawks in the playoffs. If we do, we will at least have home field. I'm pretty sure we clinched the division already, but they are 8 and 6. The doctors have cleared our center. I said we don't risk it. No new injuries, fortunately. So week 16, we got the Rams. We're 11 and 3. Any wins at this point are nice, but not necessarily needed. It's all going to be for home field purposes at this point. And we lose again, so we do like to stay hot, and we lose pretty bad, 35 to 14. I do not like how we're cooling off right now. Darnold doesn't throw any touchdowns. I really hope we can finish with a win here, get some momentum going into the playoffs. Looks like the Seahawks do lose, so they are now at risk of not making the playoffs. Be nice to not have to play them. It seems we really struggle against defensive teams because we lost to the Rams, to the Seahawks twice. So in week 17 here, it looks like we are pretty much locked up for the number one seed because the Falcons are a game behind us and I believe we beat them head to head. So we should get the tiebreaker on them. The rest of the good teams are in the AFC. We are still gonna play our starters though because we got awards and experience on the line. And I would also like to get some momentum going into the playoffs here. So we actually tie, the 24 to 24 tie. But Darnold had a good game, Gilmore got a pick. So let's see what awards we won, how much XP we earned. So unfortunately we don't get MVP, it goes to the Browns quarterback, Duncan Riley. And we also lost out on coach of the year. So that loss, or uh, that tie in the last week actually kind of hurt us. I think we had those awards until the Browns passed us in terms of their record. But we do get uh, NFC Offensive Player of the Year. Bowman picks up Defensive Player of the Year and best quarterback. So we're not gonna be hurting for XP, but we're not gonna be able to get to that 99 mark for Darnold this year. Torrio Green Beckham gets best wide receiver. Wouldn't that be something that four years from now, if Beckham just figured his life out and started playing football for an established Jared Goff, definitely does not reflect our current view of the NFL. So I am, of course, going to spend this XP because that helps our chances. And I did notice we lost Alvin Kamara for six weeks, so we're gonna have to sign a running back here because we only have one on the roster right now that's healthy. So Darnold is now a 95. 
And as far as our stats go, look at that. Darnold, 35 touchdowns to six interceptions. That's very impressive. Hyde has a very good year, as you would expect. And there's receivers kind of disappointing. Pretty spread out. Zach Short doesn't even get to 1,000 yards. Taylor Gabriel will be headed out after this year because he's going to be a free agent. So hopefully those uh, the numbers end up in the hands of Gales, Short, and McGee. But defensively, you can see why Bowman got the Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, boy, 151 tackles. And the Gilmore signing definitely helps us out. He gets five picks, and Coakley gets three. And the kicking was much better this year, Greg Zerline. And as far as our sacks go, we get uh, 10.5 from Thomas, actually our leading sacker, Buckner, Lynch, Armstead, the guys you would expect leading the charts there. Not a dominant season by anyone, but a good year for pretty much all of them. So for those wondering what our team overall is at this point, I just did all my development. We are an 86, the Rams are an 85. So I'm kind of nervous here. This is our very first playoff game in this series and just simming it. You don't know what's going to happen here. We did actually get James Conner back healthy. And we got the better quarterback. I think we got the better defense. So hopefully we can get this win at home.